In today's video, we're going to be using Autodesk Inventor to create ourselves a strap clamp. Now, if I just go for a quick fly around on this shape, you can get an idea of what a strap clamp is going to look like. Alrighty, not a lot to it. It's a fairly simple shape, so we shouldn't have too many issues while drawing this in Inventor today. Just having a look at the dimensions, we'll pop over to the orthographic view of our of our strap clamp and you can see there's the top view with our dimensions so take note of these if you need to if you're in my class I will try and provide a printout for you this is the front view this is where it's got the most dimensions which will help us when we come to sketching first up today and just with a little bit more detail we've got the side view of the strap clamp okay so over here we've got the isometric view as well, which is basically the same shape in 3D. The orthographic view is when we look at our shape in 2D. Okay, so let's get started today by heading up to our file menu. Or if you're in an older version of Inventor, just press the little orange eye that you see in the top left corner. Go down and select New. Choose the Metric Templates folder over here. And then come across to the right and select a standard millimeter Inventor part. Click create when you're ready to go and you will get an empty page on your screen ready for you to start making your strap clamp. Now to get started on the strap clamp, you need to go to the 3D model tab at the top of the page and from the ribbon I want you to click start 2D sketch. Now when you click start 2D sketch you will get three orange work planes that appear in the middle of your page. If you hover over these orange work planes you'll see that you've got an XY plane, you've got a YZ plane, and you've also got an XZ plane. We want to work with the XY plane today, so just hover your mouse over the planes until you see the XY plane, and just click on it, and that's going to allow us to start our 2D sketch first of all. Now to do this um, 2D sketch, what I want to do is push this intersection here where the Y axis and the X axis intersect. I want to push that down to the bottom left corner of my screen. So I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel, and while that's held down, I'm just going to move my mouse as well. And you see that will move the intersection just down to the bottom left. Okay. So now in this space up here, we can draw our strap clamp. Now I'm going to draw it today using the line tool. Because the first thing I'm going to draw today, as I just said a moment ago, is this kind of shape here, first of all. So take note of those dimensions, because this is the shape we'll be drawing first in 2D. Okay, so let's go back over to our part. I'm going to grab the line tool from our ribbon at the top. And I'm going to start right in the intersection there, which is the origin, where the X and the Y axis meet. Click once, and then move your mouse around, and you'll see that a line follows your mouse cursor. Okay, we've made the start of the line down on the origin there. It's now looking for a place to finish this line. So we want this line to come straight up. So we're going to go straight up the Y axis here at 90 degrees. And we're going to type 10 millimeters into the box for the measurement and just press enter. And you'll see that draws a blue line up the y axis. Now the next line is going across to the right at 90 degrees. This next line is 30 millimeters in length, so type in 30, press enter. You may need to zoom out a little bit here so you can see all of your shape. Now the next line in our strap clamp goes straight up. So another 90 degree angle, and it's going to be 42 millimeters in size. Come across to the right for the next one, again at 90 degrees, this time 60 millimeters length. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go straight down, again, another 42 millimeter line, and press enter. Then we're going to go across to the right, 90 degrees, and type in 30 mils for the size. The next line will be directly down, it's going to be 10 mils. So type in 10 and press enter. We're then going to come across to the left, 40 millimeters. So we're working along the x axis now. Type in 40 and press enter. We're going to head straight up this time, again 90 degrees. It will be 42 millimeters up. Press enter. Go to the left, 40 millimeters. Again, 90 degree angle and come straight down to the x-axis, which is going to be a 42 millimeter line, and then you can just connect it back up to the beginning. You'll see a little green dot appear when you are connecting two lines. Okay, so we've now got the basic shape of our strap clamp 
drawn in 2D. What we can do now is head up to the ribbon at the top and finish the sketch off. You may need to zoom out a little bit and hold down your mouse wheel and drag your mouse around just to position, position this back in the center of the page. Okay, and what we're going to be doing next is just extruding this to make it 3D. Okay, so the way we do that is we pop up to the extrude option in our ribbon up here. Okay, and you can see already we've started to extrude our shape. What we need to do though is change the actual distance. It needs to be a 30 millimeter extrusion. Okay, and you can see that that's extruding nicely, so we can click OK. And we've now got a good chunk of our strap clamp already complete. Okay, so that's looking good. The next thing we need to do, if I just go back over to my drawing here, is have a look from the top view down. We want to basically drill three holes through our strap clamp. If we go and look at the 3D view, you can see we've got the three holes in our shape. Okay, and they're quite easy to do. So I'm going to go back over to my part here, and we're going to start another 2D sketch. This time, I'm going to do the sketch on this top face of my shape. Okay, so what you need to do is start a 2D sketch and just click on this top face up here. Okay, that'll swing your shape around, so we're looking straight down on it, directly on top. Now before I start drawing on this shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Project Geometry button here. And I'm going to click on that square, that rectangle, and that square. And then I'm going to press Escape to turn that tool off. What that's basically done is it has projected the lines from our shape that we've already drawn onto this new sketch. Okay, it's a little bit confusing, uh, but these are just going to be guides for us when we draw our shapes or our circles in just the moment. Okay, You'll see what I mean when I grab the circle from my sketch tab up the top here in the ribbon. Grab the circle tool. Now what I want to do is I want to put a circle smack bang in the middle of this rectangle. Okay, and if you hover around the middle, you'll see some guides pop up. They're little dashed lines. When you get one coming in from the right and one coming in from the bottom, you'll know you've got your mouse cursor right on the center point of that rectangle. Okay, so you can click and drag out. And that's going to start drawing a circle out of the center of that shape. Now the circle needs to be 16 millimeters in diameter. So type in 16 mil and press enter. And that drops our circle into position. Now we need to do the same over here on the left and also on the right. And we need it in exactly in the center of these little squares. So hover your mouse around the center point and you'll see some dashed lines appear. Once you can see the two dashed lines intersecting, you'll know you've got the center point. So click and drag out another circle that's 16 millimeters. Okay, we'll do one more over here on the right. Hover around that center point until you see the dashed lines appear. There they are. Click, drag your mouse out, type in 16, and press Enter. So now you should have three circles directly in the center of that square, that rectangle, and that square. Finish the sketch when you're done. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to extrude these circles. So I'm going to click the Extrude button at the top here and I'm going to click on each of these circles. Now when you extrude, okay, it usually starts to create a 3D shape, but we can also do it in reverse where it actually cuts through other 3D shapes. All we need to do is go over here to our extrude box and choose the second option here, which is the cut option. And you'll see that they reverse direction and start cutting holes into the shapes. Okay, if you look through the top there, you can see we're starting to get a hole in the shape. The ones on the outside, though, aren't long enough. So what we can do is change the distance of those cuts, and we'll just say through all. That way it cuts a hole through everything that is below it. So when you click OK, you'll see now you've got three holes in your strap clamp. OK, and that's our strap clamp done. It's pretty easy. So the next thing we're going to do just before we finish is give it a bit of color to make it look a bit more realistic. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to hit this little color wheel up the top here. This will bring up our appearance panel. Okay, in the appearance browser here, you've got loads of different materials that you can apply to this strap clamp. I'm actually going to do a search up the top here for something that looks like steel. 
Okay, you're going to get all the different things that look like steel. Okay, before I put it on, I'm just going to click and drag over my shape so it's selected. And then I can just choose any one of these types of steel to apply to my shape. So I'm going to go with polished steel. So I'll hover over it and I'll press the little blue arrow that you can see just here. And that applies the polished steel look to my shape. So I can close this appearance browser off. As I look around, you can see it's got a bit of a shine to it now. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so that's how we draw a strap clamp. Now the next step in the process, okay, after we've drawn this, is to actually go and reproduce the orthographic and isometric view of this shape in a drawing. Okay, so that's this thing here. Alright, so I'm just going to close this off for a moment, just so it doesn't affect our shape that we're working with at the moment here. Okay, so we've got our strap clamp open. You must have this open to do this drawing. Okay, so we're going to go up to the File and New option again. Now this time from the metric templates, we're not going to create a part. We're not going to create an assembly. We're actually going to scroll down a bit here. And I want you to look for the Drawing section. In the Drawing section, I want you to choose this one here, the ANSI Millimeter Inventor Drawing. Okay, and click Create once you've got that. Now from um, this view here, we've got basically an empty orthographic view. I want you to go up to your tab at the top and choose Place Views, and then select the Base from your ribbon. Okay, and that puts in basically the base view of your shape here. I'm going to change its scale to a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 2 to 1. So that's double its usual size. So that's the first view in. If you move your mouse up, you'll see a little green dotted box follows your mouse cursor. I want you to click once there. Come out to the right. Click once. And then go up to the top right, up in your basically diagonal opposite corner. And click again. And that puts in the isometric or the 3D view. Click OK when you're done. Then you'll... It's just saying that you need to save your other part. So click OK and you might want to save that into your graphics folder. Remember to call it Strap Clamp. OK, and once you do save it, you'll see that you get your isometric and your orthographic drawings. Now, what we need to do is actually dimension these which means putting in the measurements, so if somebody else was to look at this drawing, they'd be able to recreate the shape if need be. Alright, so this is how it's going to work. We're going to start down the bottom here. Just zoom back a bit. This is our front view of our shape. So what we do, you can see the red border going around this shape. You just need to double click on this dotted red border, and it brings up the drawing view box. We're going to change the label here, and in capital letters we're going to write front view, and we're going to hit this little light bulb here, which will turn the label on. So in a moment, you'll see the words front view appear down here. But before we do that, we want to hit the pencil. And we're going to delete where it says the word scale here. Okay, we don't want to have the scale in there. We just want to have the view, which is basically the name here. We also want to highlight the word view and change the size here to 6.10 millimeters. Just make the text a little bit bigger and click OK. Click OK again, and you see you get the word front view. You can pick that up and just move it down a little bit if you want. And that just tells us that's the front view of our shape. If you come over to this view over here, this is the side view. So double click on the little red border that you can see. Change the label to side view. Hit the little light bulb to turn that label on. And then just hit the pencil to edit that. Remember, we want to delete the scale. We'll just leave the view there. Change the font to 6.10. Click OK. And click OK. And you'll see that you get the side view text come up. Again, pick it up a little bit and just drag it down so it's a little bit lower. The last view we've got up here that we want to work with at the moment is the top view. So double click on the red border. Change the label to top view. Turn the visibility on by hitting the light bulb and then give it a quick edit. Delete the word scale, and then highlight the word view, and make the size of the font the biggest you can get it there at 6.1mm. Click OK. 
click OK. We've got our views all sorted. OK, so that's all our orthographic views done. The isometric view is a little bit different. OK, so double click on the border here. We're going to do a few extra things to this view. First of all, we're going to scale it up one size bigger, so it's a three to one size. OK, don't worry if it doesn't quite fit. We will make it fit just by dragging it across a little bit. Just got to drag the border over. OK, um, we're also going to click this little button here, the shaded view. That way it's going to colour in so we can see this all the different colours in it. We're going to change the label to say isometric view and we're going to turn the visibility on by hitting that little light bulb. Now with the pencil when we go to edit it I want you to leave the scale there this time. Okay so highlight all the text and just change the size to 6.1 mil and click OK. When you click OK now you'll see that we get the words isometric view and the scale comes up so it's a 3 to 1 scale. Just shows it this here is three times the usual size. All right. Okay, the next thing we want to do is add in the dimensions for our shape. So if somebody else was to pick up this drawing, they'd want to be able to look at the dimensions and know how to draw it or recreate this shape exactly. So go up to the Annotate tab at the top, and in your ribbon, select the Dimension option. Let's start with the front view. Okay, let's start with some straight lines. All you need to do is hover over the lines. When they turn red, you click on them, drag up, and then click again, click OK. And you can see that this is a 60 millimeter line running across here. Okay, I'll do a few of the sides now. So you just click, drag out, click again to drop it, and click OK. All right, we know that this side and this side are the exact same size, so we don't need to label it twice, just label it once. I might do this edge over here which is going to be 10 mil. Uh, looking down the bottom here, what can we do? Might do this one just here, it's going to be 40 mil. Um, I might do this one just here, it's 30 mil. And remember this length here and this length here are the same, so we don't need to label it twice. Don't need to label that twice. Um, this one down here we haven't labeled yet. What I might actually do, instead of labeling this down here, I might label by clicking that line and then that line. And it's going to show me the distance between those two lines as 10. Okay, so we can determine that's 30 mil across there and another 10 will give you 40 mil. So that line down there will be 40 mil. You don't need to actually write that in because it can be assumed by adding 10 and 30 together. So that's probably all we need to label on our front view. We just move across by holding down our mouse wheel. We can look at the side view of the shape. Okay, to dimension that, we probably just need to dimension one side here. Um, so I might go from top to bottom line. So click the top and the bottom line and drag out to the right, and you'll get a 52 millimeter dimension. And looking at the top view, so this is looking straight down on top of the shape. Uh, we'll label a few things here. We'll label this line by clicking on it dragging up. We'll label this line, click and drag up, and we'll label that line there. You probably didn't have to do all three of those because you can tell that the 30 is on the end of the same, but we'll just leave it as is. Um, we'll label the width here, so that's 30. And we'll label one of these circles. Okay, they're all the same size, so you only need to label one of them. You can see that they've got a 16 millimeter diameter. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty good. That's all labeled. That's dimensioned. The last thing we do is look in this bottom right corner. It's just going to ask for a title for your document. So just with your text tool, click inside of it, and you want to put some text in that says, in capital letters, strap clamp. Highlight that text and make it the biggest you can get it, so 6.1 mil. Click OK. Press Escape to turn that text tool off and feel free to just move that under the title. Alright, you should see in the top left too who it's drawn by. It's got my last name there. If you want to write your last name in too, if it's not already there, feel free to do so. Okay, so I'll just zoom back now. That is how we do the orthographic and isometric drawings for our shapes. Okay, so you completely finished this tutorial now, you've created yourself a 3D strap clamp, 
and then you've been able to do the isometric view, which is the 3D view, and the orthographic drawings, which is the 2D view of the shape with all the different dimensions. Okay, we'll catch you in the next tutorial where we'll do something different with just a different shape.